So welcome back to the Health Chat. I'm Dr. Greg Nye. And I'm Dr. Greg Eckel. And today our topic is uh, almost predictable, probably. It's the topic on a lot of people's mind, and that's the, um, the radiation, yeah. generally. Of course, we've got a meltdown happening on the other side of the world, but it is affecting us here now. And so it's something that we need to be conscious of and not to panic about by any means. But we do know from... Uh, EPA collecting data from several sites around the country, and they've now posted this on a on an, an interactive website. We do know that they're finding increased levels, low levels, but increased levels of radiation now. In it's found in rainwater, in drinking water, and in milk. Not all of those places all over the country, but different places have increased levels of in the states. U.S. Right, and so. It, we're getting a lot of questions here in the clinic, both by email and from patients, sure. who are curious about what do we do? How do you protect against that? And so today we want to just give some ideas of how we think about radiation. Indeed. And, you know, radiation is, uh, there, is a, there is a natural radiation on the planet, and we have been exposed to a lot of different sources of radiation. And I think one of the just differentiating factors, there's ionizing radiation. That's what is coming from nuclear reactor meltdowns, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, medical testing. Medical testing, x-ray, MRIs. And then there's radio frequencies. Oh, not oh, MRIs. No, not MRIs. Not Pardon MRIs. me. Pardon yeah. me. Just, but CT scans. CT scans. Get people right. Freaked out MRIs, on that. Yeah. Pardon me. Uh, and on radio frequencies. So like radio waves, microwaves, uh, frequencies from your cell phones, etc. Those are called uh, radio frequencies, non-ionizing radiation. Um, the two different components of those, the ionizing radiation, really can create free radical uh, damage or create free radicals that damage our bodies. And they can, that can affect your DNA, uh, which is, has some really significant health issues. Now, on the radio frequencies, there is also some research to show that it increases cellular metabolism, and we'll, we'll see if we can get into that a little bit today, but we're going to really focus on the ionizing radiation um, in light of what's going on in the world today. So one of the things that I think is important to keep in mind about radiation is that it's, what it does in the body is no different than what, um, what smoking does or what... Uh, eating kind of fried foods does or what high levels of stress do and that is to create free radicals that damage our cells right and certainly radiation does that as well it radiation feels like this kind of uh, nebulous evil, yeah evil, cloud uh, coming at us and and uh, there is some, you know, th there's a truth to the fact that it's harder to get away from radiation than it is to get away from fried food. Right. You can't see it. Right. Right. Um, but the damage that is done is the same. It's the generation of free radicals. And from a naturopathic perspective, the protection is the same. And that is that at a cell level, we quench the free radicals. In other words, as soon as they get generated, we want to be sure that we have those nutrients that are necessary to, to, to cancel out that free radical that just got made. And so if we can cancel them out as quickly as they're getting made, no damage is done. And that's the challenge um, to keep. And that's hard to measure as well. It is hard to measure. And so what happens is you just hedge your bets. You right. Know? You, it's all percentages. It's all percentages. And so we want to make sure we are fortified with the free radical quenching potential which are in the form of antioxidants, right. dietary and, and supplements and all those things that try to keep that balance, um, you know, so that the, it doesn't go in the favor of free radical generation. Right, and that would be also then on decreasing our, what we can decrease on our exposure to yes, free right. radical causing radiation or other behaviors that we have. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today is, well, what can we do about it? I mean, yeah, you can get worried, you can get sick, but that's really not going to help you in the long run as far as this, you know, now increased background radiation from nuclear power plant meltdown. Um, I do think it gives pause in the environmental movement of, you know, is this a really safe technology for us to have? One, the two isotopes that got released from Japan or iodine-131, which has a, that's a smaller half-life. That has an eight-day half-life. 
Uh, and then there's cesium, 1, 137? Uh, I forget the cesium. 167. It's cesium uh, isotope. Uh, you can check it out online. Uh, that ha that's more concerning because it has a higher, it's just going to be around forever. Decades. Yeah. Decades. And it's, you know, infiltrated the system and it's going to bioaccumulate. So you really look at, well, what can you do? Number one, I think radon, if you live in an area of the country that has high radon gas, you've got to check your basement for radon gas. And that's, I think now part of all new home purchases, there is a radon gas check. Uh, in the Northwest, we don't have a high radon uh, underlying gas uh, mm -hmm. content, but yeah. I know in the Northeast and the Midwest, those are big areas for radon uh, pollution, and there's things that you can do to get rid of that. Um, and then smoking uh, definitely creates, um, it creates radiation, number one, and two, it creates a lot of free radical issues. Yeah, not a lot of people realize that smoking takes up um, I, well, I want to say it's polonium, but I'm not yeah. sure. But it's a tobacco plant accumulates that particular radioactive uh, uh, isotope in its leaves, and smoking. I forget the exact. I, I'll, I'll butcher the number. Right, but right, essentially right. smoking a pack a day for a year is a, an equivalent of getting multiple chest X-rays. Right. Yeah. Um, that exposure. Uh, and so what we're what we really want to get at here is that so radon is background exposure to these things, smoking is exposure to radiation, and the the counteracting of these effects is through the things that protect against that damage. And so we're talking about the antioxidant vitamins right. are the most important. Vitamin E, vitamin C. Uh, these things are documented in studies that have multiple hundreds of studies that have been done looking at the ability of these antioxidant vitamins to protect against the damage of radiation. Right. And so uh, those, the, may, the big antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, um, selenium is another in there. There's an amino acid called cysteine that is involved. These are all involved in the production at the cell level of what's called glutathione, which is the body's main protection. It's the main quencher of those free radicals that get generated. And so the more that we can do to make sure that we just maintain a constant supply of these antioxidants coming in through diet, through supplements, it just it just keeps us protected no matter where our exposures are coming from. Yeah, and I think the, the big big concern that we've heard from folks is around cancer. Um, okay. You know, that is the, the biggest concern is on cancer. And you know, we also get asked about cell phone usage as well yeah, yeah. as a right. as a radiation. Now, cell phones, like I mentioned, was a uh, it's a radio frequency, so it's non-ionizing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's recent research that has come out that shows that there has been an increase in metabolism of cells where the antenna is at the head. And you know, talking before the show, we're, we're kind of just discussing as that technology has been embraced by our cultures on the planet, younger and younger people, kids are now using it. And that is, that is a great unknown, it's you know, because like we, no we don't know what is happening there because one, you've got rapid cellular growth in children through up to through adulthood. And then you've got then an increase of cellular metabolism Speeding with that. Up with that heat that's generated. There. And it takes about, you know, it can be 10 to 30 years for a glioma or a brain cancer to to be created and so we I think the jury is still out and I think prudence weighs in on uh, on cellular use it's not saying don't use them but I would say watch your use with children I would really limit their their uh, their access right. to cell phones I mean even and, though all the kids on the block are doing it and also I, I think um, these kind of antioxidants that we're talking about yeah. for us as adults it's doubly important to make sure that our kids are eating a kind of diet that has a regular supply of these kind of nutrients yeah vitamin A beta carotene and making sure they have adequate vitamin D and all those things that will protect the young body right. against those damages because when the damage happens young it, the result of that damage it's big. aren't seen for right. a few decades. decades right. It can be very real. All right. Well, we wanted to we wanted to come out with something uh, just timely. I know we've got a lot. There's a lot of questions out there. If you have further questions about radiation or what you can do, please email them to us because we will answer them on here for you. And also, just to note, a few people have sent us questions 
um, that we will get to next time that we do one of these. We wanted to get through this particular topic because it's very timely and we have had lots of questions. But um, if you do have questions, please send them. We may even dedicate a show to On try questions. to get through these yeah. because we have a, a little bit of a backlog of questions. And that's questions at naturecuresclinic.com. Yes. And definitely check out our website. We're continually updating and writing and uh, producing stuff for you all to uh, get educated out there. Thanks for joining us.